Good morning. I'm Andrew and I worship at St Andrew's in the parish of Minehead. I have a fascination for the stars, or, or more accurately, for everything up there. I'm afraid I'm not very good at remembering the things I read about uh, the heavens, but that simply means that when I discover something for the second time, I can be astounded all over again. A number of contributors to this eight-minute series have chosen one of the Psalms. They cover so many of the human emotions, puzzlement, confusion, anger, devotion, and so on. I've chosen a Psalm which shows the writer to be amazed, astounded, or struck. Psalm 8. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what is man? that you should be mindful of him, the son of man, that you should seek him out. You have made him little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honour. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. The psalmist's understanding of the stars, of course, was very limited, and yet the sight of the night sky moved him or her to awe-struck wonder. How much more can this be true for us? We now have an understanding of the scale of the observable universe, and greater still, the parts of the universe we can't see. But just to look and be able to identify the planets moving in regular orbits around our sky is wonderful. Right now it's possible to see around bedtime with the naked eye, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. And there's a certain amount of excitement at these last two giants in close conjunction as we approach Christmas. Or how wonderful to see the Andromeda galaxy, also with the naked eye. It consists of around one million million stars. It's so far away that the light takes two and a half million years to get here. We're seeing the Andromeda galaxy as it was two and a half million years ago. And what was happening on Earth at that time, I wonder? Homo sapiens hadn't arrived, of course, nor Homo erectus. In fact, the making and using of fire by humanoids was still half a million years away. That's what we're looking at when we see the Andromeda galaxy, a local galaxy, life as it was two and a half million years ago. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? It's the natural reaction for human beings when confronted by the scale of the universe to be overwhelmed by our total insignificance in the created order. 
Surely this must be even more true for us when we speak of the Andromeda galaxy, two and a half million light years away, as a member of our local group. What is man? But the psalmist does not stop there. He reminds himself that God is not just a God of the infinite, but of the intimate. Speaking of mankind, he reflects, you have made him little lower than the angels and crown him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under his feet. God has done these things. This psalm restores to us a proper perspective of the created order, so that we may have a proper appreciation of the Creator himself. As we approach Christmas, we gaze in awe at Jesus, the agent of creation, the creator of the stars and planets, the galaxies, and all the matters matter we can't even see, born as a baby in a stable and lying in a manger. So, are we insignificant? Yes in dimensional terms, but insignificant to God, never. I'd like to end with a prayer using words from my favorite cowl. Thou who art God, Beyond all praising, all for love's sake becamest man, stooping so low, yet sinners raising heavenward by thine eternal plan. Saviour and King, we worship thee. Amen.